Konnichiwa. Hello everyone. My name is Kanak and I'm 14 years old. I've lived in many different countries, grown up in a multicultural environment, changed many schools, and learned a lot of languages like French, Japanese, Thai, Afrikaans, Hindi, Sindhi, and Marathi. Every time I visit India, my home country, I get asked the most cliched, the most repetitive question. Kanak Beta, out of all the countries you've been to, which one is your favorite? I give them a sigh, a little smile maybe, and pick Japan. I love Japan. I love its culture, its language, its food, its history, and its people. Having lived here for almost four years and having made Japanese friends, my understanding and affection for Japan and the Japanese language has only grown. I think languages are an open gateway to understand cultures. I love the intricacy of words and how language can affect thinking and communication. The more time I spend here, the more curious I get about Japanese culture, and the more I want to learn. Let's start here. This is very interesting. I'll role play out a really common scenario that I've witnessed. Let's say I have a friend named Motoya, and that I want to go out for ramen with him. I'd say something like, Hi Motoya, would you want to go out for ramen with me? If he didn't want to, which would be very sad, he would say something like, Ah, I'm not so sure. I guess I'm busy. This level of uncertainty in a stone is very distinct, but at the same time, he would never blatantly say no. In this case, I would assume it's an obvious no from him. In Japanese conversation, the speaker does not really complete a sentence, but rather leaves it open for the listener to assume. Isn't this very unique? Let's take another example. I have Japanese neighbors who have a one-year-old toddler named Taichi, who are extremely friendly and helpful. Whenever Taichi cries or makes some noise, they are more worried that we might get disturbed, and they're always apologetic. There are many such examples. When you observe such behavioral trends, all these aspects of language, culture, and behavior only have one purpose, to avoid causing meiwaku. Meiwaku, meaning to annoy, to trouble, to cause problems for, to be a bother, is a phenomenon highly frowned upon in Japanese culture. If I were to describe Japan's culture and mentality in one word, I'd say conservative. I don't necessarily think conservatism is a problem, but it is a barrier to societal growth. Japanese society promotes the idea of emerging yourself in the group in the way that you're almost invisible. They don't share their feelings. They shield themselves from the outside world. And they follow whatever the group does. Why? To avoid being a bother. And to avoid causing meiwaku. This ideology has continued to shape much of their culture today. It is often said that Japanese lack a sense of self-identity or the concept of self. They think about how their decisions will affect people around them. That is why they're so mindful of others. They do not trespass or intrude into others' lives. However, there is another side to the coin. It is not entirely true to say that the Japanese have no self. They do have a self, but it is a highly private self. Let's take an example. Japanese people tend to have a diary in which they write their most intimate, private, and revealing thoughts and opinions. The Japanese tend to have a much larger public self than a private self. Sometimes, Japanese people present an alternative version of themselves in society, one that they feel is acceptable. The world is changing rapidly. Given the way previous Japanese generations have been brought up, this new generation is in a dilemma. Now, we have seen both sides of the coin. If I were to think from a Japanese teenager's perspective, I would definitely be in a dilemma. On one hand, I would feel responsible to preserve the richness of Japanese culture, and on the other hand, I would want to adapt myself to face 
the real world challenges. There we go. We've done it. Cheers to the talk of my prompt. Is Japan in, in a cultural dilemma? Short answer, yes. In order for Japan as a society to progress and thrive in the 21st century, it needs to become more open to external influence. However, it is also important to nurture and prioritize the values Japanese culture brings. But at the same time, Japanese people have to understand that they need to take a bigger approach to life. An open-minded approach will foster creativity, innovation, and the sharing of ideas. Will Gen Z be the breakthrough of this dilemma? Thank you.